Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, once again it is time to try something a little bit different around here, but different for me means being a little bit more normal. This is as straight a review as I am ever going to get, but this way I can always deliver reviews without having to worry about my schedule getting in the way. So here we are going through the first of the figures I am required to review as per Greg's instructions. It is Revenge of the Fallen Jolt, and it is one of my favorite figures for the Revenge of the Fallen line for many reasons. Now, for vehicle mode, there's not a whole lot to say. I will go ahead and get this out of the way. It rolls quite nicely. There's no hindrance in the wheels and nothing on the underside that gets in the way, unlike a lot of rolling figures tend to do. Uh, detailing on this is quite quite nice especially here in the front you get a very nicely detailed grill and that Chevy logo done up in gold over here that same silver paint beautiful Hasbro silver with a little bit of yellow for the turn signal a little bit more down there you can see the molding it's all done quite nicely and you know it is very accurate to the original car now Look here at the wheels. You can see those hubs in the inside very well molded, very well done. Uh, they're not separate like they are on some, but it is a nice effect and works very well on both wheels actually. So that is very nice in and of itself. Looking at the rear, we have some molded detailing on the tail lights, looking very nice and very bright red color. You get another Chevy emblem, but this one's unpainted. And just in case you forget what vehicle you're looking at, it is the Volt. Jolt the Volt, of course. And Jolt is going to get pulled over for not having that license plate on. Well, you try to warn them, they don't do anything. A little bit of black here to change up the design, and that black comes from the top. There's a little bit of texture here, so it kind of has the feel and look of a vinyl top. Very well done. And aside from the other, that, you've got the painted... Uh, rear view mirrors, black on the inside, silver on the outside, this very nice uh, bluish green window tint, and a slightly sparkly blue plastic, it's a gorgeous shade of blue, and adds a little bit of a metallic paint job look. This is very nicely done, all around very nice robot mode, especially if you're starting your own Chevy dealership in your bedroom and your display. Now, we move on to robot mode. Yep, no transformation demo, no frills. This is just straight opinion, believe it or not. Just when I want to go in a little bit more in depth than a rushed review will allow. And I can always get a review out this way if I keep it simple. Here we have Jolt in robot mode. And here's where we really start to see why I like him so much. He does something in his transformation that I wish I could demonstrate, but to keep this video short, that's impossible. His transformation is simple. I think a lot of Revenge of the Fallen Deluxes get this wrong. Joel, or, uh, like you're talking like skids and mud flap, you know, spinning legs around, pulling off big car shells, twisting them around, cramming, folding things in. There's just way too much for a simple thing like a deluxe toy. I want it simple, enjoyable, and Jolt does that beautifully with his transformation. Now, you're going to want to tr change him a little bit differently than the instructions show, because they will have kibble going across the shoulders here, which is going to really hinder the shoulders and the arm articulation. Go ahead and do it like this, folding the bumper over that way, holding the bumper or the hood down and you can see the side panels on the car that's where you want them to go this way everything is out of the way the shoulders are fully movable and nothing is really obstructing there's a little bit of obstruction here but it's a small price to pay for how much more range of motion you get now articulation wise uh, all the standards are here you get a little bit of ball jointed neck waist ball jointed hips, knees, reverse knees, feet, shoulders at the ball joint, and a hinge here at, at the torso. You also get the bicep swivel and the elbows. 
So a very nice range of articulation all around. There's some very nice poses you can get him into, though the kibble right behind his head does limit his neck articulation. Not a whole lot you can do about that. Color-wise it works. He's very unified here. Three different shades of blue working, including this translucent greenish blue that really gives him a dynamic look to his chest. Unfortunately, the light has to be kind of bright or some of this detail gets washed out. That's a little bit unfortunate because there's a lot of detail going on here. Really hoping that an eventual repaint of him is going to bring a lot of that out in some paint applications. And here's the hoping. Uh, he's got a lot of little uh, cheats. You can see tires here where they're supposed to go in the movie model. And these little uh, clawed hands inside the doors. It's almost very G1 in how they stuck the hands in there. The only real grievance I have with the sculpt is in the face. In that it's the eyes. The eyes are a little buggy. It makes him look very young, especially with that like little puffy pouty face he's got going on. Um, not that it's a really bad thing, you just have to get used to it a little bit, I guess. It makes him look different and distinct. I do, I do like this, uh, I do like the uh, Galvatron thing he's trying to do with his head. It actually makes him look very cool, very unique for an Autobot. So, well done. So, yeah, quite enjoy the figure here. You get a little bit of gimmick in him. Rotating these little parts on his hands brings out the Electro Whips, the ones that resurrected Optimus Prime, or more precisely, uh, uh, super glued Jetfire to Optimus Prime. It adds a little bit of weaponry to him. It's a little neat function, though you can just fold them out manually. You don't need to twist anything around, so that's kind of a bummer. But overall, he does a lot of things right that I think a lot of Revenge of the Fallen figures get wrong, and that's where I really draw my love of this toy. He's got a lot, a lot of little things going for him, and if you can get by some of the weird design details, like the little buggy eyes he has, and uh, the unfortunate appearance of wearing baggy shorts, then you're going to have yourself a really good toy. If anyone's been put off by how complicated some of the deluxes have been to transform, like, you know, Rampage or Mudflap, this is a very welcome alternative. Highly, highly recommended. If you have not gotten him yet, go get him.